Hi and welcome to movie 22. Um, I am going to uh, use the fast forward. Um, in other words, I'm going to time stretch and really speed up the, the, the finishing off of all of the hair. And what I'm going to be doing is adding new layers to this layer palette. And I'm going to be um, working in different sections. So I want to move down to an area that I had, which I believe is right here. Let me... Um, command click these and make sure that I don't have anything there no the, that area is um, done that 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 area is used up you can see the selection right over here so I'm gonna command click um, those areas right there that area there this area here and I'm looking for the layers that don't have anything on them which is right there so I'm gonna take the um, light medium and dark lower right area this is the lower right area here and I'm going to pretty much finish off um, through uh, as I speed up so again I won't be talking a lot I'm in the R key so I'm gonna rotate this to the best of my ability to to um, angle for the best of my painting ability which is about right there and it's not really my painting ability it's just my my like of direction I can put in these strokes going more horizontally than I can vertically um, with the uh, on the Wacom tablet so I'm gonna be clicking to the um, to the light value right here because as I flip on and off the um, clicky copy which um, is up here a ways whoops I'm sorry um, I don't want that to be flipped too much and I should have hit the B key coming back um, just so I didn't stay in the rotate tool so I'm gonna flip this on and off and you can see how I'm gonna be painting with this on and what I want is to be painting on the one layer down here that I have um, selected which is this layer right there that I'm clicking on um, so I am going to uh, hold the option key and on my Wacom tablet I've made one of the buttons be the option key and I'm gonna actually zoom into that area right there and I'm gonna grab this light value right here so I'm gonna hold the option key and grab that light value and then I'm going to um, just make it a bit brighter right here and I have to bring the color picker over to this window so let me just make it just a bit brighter and what I've done is I have as you can see up here my flow is at a hundred so normally with the mouse when I paint I'm gonna put my flow around eight or eight or nine I want my flow on the Wacom tablet to be um, under control of how much pen pressure I push so let me just zoom back out and let's get to a comfortable stage here and again um, in a second or two I'm not gonna keep on talking I just want to make sure I'm on the correct layer and I'm gonna paint up here just so you see what I'm gonna be doing so I'm gonna be putting in these strokes um, obviously you can't see because the clicky copy is on so let me just flip it off so you can see these strokes going in in a nice delicate manner and my brush is approximately the size of well it's what you see so I have made again my button um, on the um, Wacom tablet I can toggle um, big or small that and um, the diameter of the brush so let me zoom in and let's see um, what I'm talking about so there there is a even though you see the diameter of that circle is that much I can actually come in and through pen pressure put in a lot smaller stroke but I even want to make it smaller so um, so I can really get some fine-tuned hairs going in that direction now to remove everything from that layer because I've obviously don't want to paint up in the sky I'm just gonna click on this layer make sure I'm on that layer hit control or command A to select all and just hit the delete key and that'll take away that material now let me back out of this so I can get my strokes to be pretty good from this direction um, I'll move this on the screen in about there let me back out of it a little bit more and I'm going to paint again with the clicky copy on and just see what I get now I need small medium values and dark values so I've now as you can see I've made my three layers I'm going to put in the lights though and I'm just going to start painting with these lights um, so you can see the size of my brush here and I'm just going to um, hit my R button and rotate it just a little bit more this way so I can start putting in these values hit the B key and I'm back to painting now I'm already painting these light values and I'm putting in several um, several 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 as I want to move my direction this way um, you can see that I am actually now let's turn off the clicky copy for a sec and let's see what I've got 
So let me just zoom up. I probably should move the clicky copy down a ways in the layer palette just to get it to about the top of the hair. Let me put it at the top of the hair for now. And um, I don't really need the background on, but I don't care that it dimmed the background. So let's turn this off and you can see that I have gotten all of these light hairs that are going in this direction. Now, I'll paint on that light hair layer if I can go down and remember where I put it. It's light lower right. So if I turn this off, you can see that that's light lower right. So let me just continue on and let's just put in those values right here, those hairs that are going to give this more definition, more softness of value. And I just saw that I had Command A. I had the selection still active, so I'm going to hit um, Control or Command D to deselect the selection. Make sure I'm still selected on that layer, but we're going to move up a little bit on this so I can get both of them on screen. Now I have this layer here and these three red layers, and I can toggle this on and off. So. Let's now just continue on and just continue painting the light value. Let's even eclipse the edge of the illustration. And let's just start. I'm not going to paint the ones that are going in opposite directions, but I just want some gentleness to come. Gentleness meaning very thin, thin hair. Now, I'm probably going to switch to the middle layer right here. Let's zoom in and let's grab that middle value. So let's hold the Option key. I'm remembering what tool it is, uh, what button it is on my Wacom tablet. It's right there. I want that color, which is a, you can see it's a, it's a Sienna color. And let's just grab it here. And now make sure I'm painting on that layer. and. Now I'm going to see what I've got. Let's back off of this. And let's continue to paint. Now we're going to get into the medium hairs, the medium hair color in this area. So I'm going to move the layer down to the medium, as you can see here. And I've done something um, I forgot to tell you guys. I've done something that is going to help me, um, or just give me a little bit of a extra um, choice is what I wanted to say. So I'm going to turn off the clicky copy and just for a moment I'm going to back out of this and I'm going to um, show you guys something. Let me just reset. Let me hit the R button and reset the view for a second. Um, when I put in the background, let me turn this off, this clicky copy off. When I put in the background here, um, I had um, all right, uh, this is the one I actually want off for right now. I had this background in, okay? And um, I think I'll, um, I'll start using this clicky copy right here because I want you to see something. I want to see how the hairs are impacting against the background. And I'm, I, you know, because it's Photoshop, you can do different backgrounds if you want. So let me show you what I've chosen. Um, and I didn't do it on camera because it's just using color range and it's using the painterly techniques that I've shown you over and over and over again. But let me turn off this background and show you that I've given myself, um, and I'll turn off, uh, I'll turn on the white background just so you see the white original layer down here that I'm clicking on. But I've given myself one background here of that kind of bark behind the tree because she's holding a rope and it looks like she's sitting next to a swing or standing or even sitting on the swing. But then I'm going to choose this one actually. And this is, um, I'll open this layer just so you can see this folder here. And um, I'm trying to open that. There we go. And here is the actual reference. Okay. So um, I went and got from the internet um, some tree bark background that was licensed for reuse. And I just um, took a couple of hours, um, actually about an hour and a half, a while ago to paint it. And let me bring over the channels and show you the different channels. Whoops. Let me show you the different channels that I actually had incorporated in in that. So I had, um, if I uh, turn off all of the young lady, just so you can see, whoops, I just clicked on something. Let me move this up. Um, it's not as easy to scroll with the Wacom tablet on this, so um, I'm just going to move this up. And let's uh, close this. 
and let's turn off all of these and I'll turn on that background again and then um, here is let me move this over here are the channels that I used for the different values that were in that bark ranging from and here is my swatches palette ranging from these swatches right here on the bottom from this light yellow to the dark color to the raw sienna burnt sienna to the orange to the white and to the gray bark is what I actually color ranged on there so it went from the dark values that you see um, where did I start that it went from the dark values that you see here 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 this was to grab the light value here to, to grab all the light little highlights and so um, let me click back to here which is the actual um, tree bark and let me turn it off and then I'll just remove all the layers so you can see what I've done and there's a reason why I did this um, the reason is because I wanted more of the hair to show against um, a darker background than against the sky background. Does that make sense? So here are here's the black of the dark. Let me show you the reference again. And you can see that working my way from my dark to my light in the reference, I worked my way from my dark to my light. So I painted all of these channels, selections, and then I am able to um, just build to those tones using my painterly techniques finally I put on the highlights there and then I even have some of the gray that I brought back over here and then she starts to look a lot um, her hair starts to look a little bit better let me close that folder and let's now turn on all this stuff and you can see just how well that she actually works against that background let me turn off the um, sky background reference I must have turned that on here so Look at how her hair comes off of that background a little bit better than against the sky. And I thought the sun on her face and on her neck and everything looked good with the sun on the tree. And it looks like she is by a tree. So let me just um, back off on this a little bit so you can kind of see. And I'll move her over. And I just feel that the sun looks a little bit better. Let me turn on the original sky background. And there's the difference between the two backgrounds. I like that. I have no problem with that. I even like this one. Okay, I think that one maybe even simplifies the whole process. Um, but I like this one too. And that's the, kind of the fun of Photoshop, okay? So you can just plug in and experiment and do what you want. But let's get back to the hair. So let's go to the hair and uh, let me find my own hair layer, okay? And let's go um, move this up so I can get to the hair on the top layer here. So I'll use that hair to bring off the light values hair. So let's zoom in and the medium hair. So let me make sure I'm on the correct hair layer, which was, let me make sure this is it. Yes, that's the lower one. So this is the medium value hair. Let's zoom in to the reference and let's get up to the reference and let's, um, zoom in and get let me hit the B button to get to the brush and let's zoom in to get to the medium hair I just wanted you to see that and you could have fast forwarded through that rate to get to this so let's just get to that medium value and whoops that's, I didn't need to get that close and let's um, hold the option key and grab um, the medium value hair I was probably just a little bit too close there and let's get back on it Let's rotate the canvas and put it back at the position that I need to paint on. Hit the B key and I'm ready to go. And you can see here if I even paint the medium hair on her head. Oh, let me Command Z back and then Option Command Z back so I can actually go in and turn off the clicky copy. Oh, I didn't even have to move it down. It's right there. So let's go turn off the clicky copy and you can see that I can put in all these beautiful hairs. Um, you know what? Um, I had changed. I'm 5% on the flow. I want to put it back to 100%. And I also want to see if in a right hand click I'm at 0% hardness. So I, I am, which means I have a tiny bit of a feather on there. And now these are the medium hairs. And you can see just how nice that is right there. 
Um, so I'm going to Command Z back, and I'll Option Command Z back until all that's gone, or I'll just hit Command A to select all, and hit the Delete key. But let's now turn on the um, Clicky Copy, and I'm just going to start painting some of these lighter, uh, medium-valued hairs back in, and since I'm painting underneath the other hair layer, which was the light highlight hairs, um, basically I'm not really um, hurting those. I'm just maybe giving them a little bit more value behind there. As you can see, I'm actually putting just a little bit more hair. Whoops, I don't need, certainly don't need that right there. So let's come in like this. And you can see how I'm just bringing off some of those hairs right through the shirt. Now, um, I would like to um, examine the clicky copy. And I want to see that some of those hairs are actually, some of the tan hairs are on top. And I don't need very many. So I'm going to go down and I want you to see that I've actually put in these layers from here to here. And I haven't even named them yet. I've colored them all yellow just so I know where they are, but I'm going to start by painting some of the top hairs above all of this other stuff. I'm going to paint the top hairs on these layers. So turning this off, um, let me turn on the smaller version. If I, Hopefully I have it somewhat convenient, and if not, I'll make one. So let's um, turn on the hair here, but I really I like where that head is but I really want to put a new head right next to me. So I'm going to take this, let's um, back off on this, and let us grab um, this copy right here, and let's duplicate it. And let me um, shrink it down, so I'll Command-T it down. And then I just want to have it next to me over here just so I can have it to look at and I really only want that side of it so I'll make it slightly bigger and I'll put it right here so so far I'm only working on this side of it so I'll take the lasso and I'll just slice this right off on this side here because that's actually what I want now I really all I needed to do to tell you the truth is um, all I needed to do is just grab this lasso and hit command J and that would have given me this right here, which is fine. I'll hit the V key and move this one up a little bit. Now I can see that hair. I can even hit Command T and make that slightly larger. <clears throat> and when you have this many layers and when you have this much stuff going on, you just got to remember your patience and just keep on moving forward no matter how long things take you. Let me turn off the clicky copy now, and let me move this farther over. And I really don't need my background on, so I'm going to move my background and take it off. Um, in fact, I'm going to take off both backgrounds. And um, I do want something on the outside, so I'm going to turn off the white background so I can see this against the original background that was there. I'll just zoom in now and I can get a pretty good feel of what I'm supposed to be looking at. And remember, I said I was going to paint on these upper layers, so that's exactly what I'm going to do. So now, let's move back over here. Let's um, hit the B key. Let's make the brush even smaller. And let's just start by painting some of these hairs. Let me hit the R button and put this in a little bit better venue so I can paint a little bit more like this. Back to the B key. And I just want to bring in just a little bit more of this value here. And remember, I can layer mask some of this back. What I'm trying to do is to just keep working at the hair, not overworking the hair, but keep on working it until I get the look that I want with the amount of hair that I want. So, and what I mean is it's going to require, you know, um, a lot of layers and a lot of strokes. So I just want to keep these strokes just moving in a really good manner and a really comfortable, delicate manner and just keep it going until it looks right. And that's really the essence of painting, isn't it? Just keep it going until it looks right. 
um, let's just continue to work this area. I'm looking at this reference right here and I'm seeing that some of the light hairs need to come off here. So I'll switch to this layer right here. I'll hold down the Option key and I will grab this light value right there. And then I'll even make it a little bit brighter here. And since I'm on a new layer, it's fine. I'll make it brighter. Now I'm going to bring off some of these hairs in this area, not in that hair that's going in this direction, but I just want to bring in very gently. Look what I'm doing. I'm bringing in some of these hairs right, right through here that are just real gentle, real thin. I'll even make the brush a tiny bit smaller. And let's just see if we can get some, some real nice feel to this. See these hairs that are coming off of her neck here? I'm going to use my capability to paint, but I'm also going to use um, some other tricks in a few minutes or in maybe the next movie. And we're just going to keep this process rolling. So let's just keep this rolling. And I'm probably going to start to paint and not talk. Okay, let me move the channels palette over. So I think I'm going to speed up the entire process now. And the next time I talk, I'm going to hopefully have all the hair in. Um, I might come back and talk for a couple of minutes when I actually put in hairs that are going like this in opposite directions. And I'm going to cut some paths for that. And then I'm going to move the path and the selection around. And I'm going to flip this back and forth to have this on so I can see how much of that gentle hair I actually want in here. And you can just see exactly what I'm doing. So I'll let you know when I'm going to speak again.
Hello, um, I am back in um, this pathway here that I have, um, I'm showing you. Um, I actually wanted that pathway. You can see it's on the flyaway pathway uh, for the bangs and it's the one I have selected. Um, I am going to command exit off of there and I'm gonna click the new path. As you can see, it's um, path number one. And I'm going to just say bangs because that's what I named the layer I'm going to paint on. But I wanted to draw a path for that and hit Command V to paste. And in Photoshop, you know Command V paste in the exact same place. Now I'm going to zoom in because I want to have a little bit more control over these flyaway hairs. And I'm not done with all the flyaway hairs. And I'm probably not going to show you all of the flyaway hairs that I do because they're going to generally be the same way that I'm doing this one and the ones that I did previous. So I drew one of the paths on one side of the hair and now I'm going to hold the control alt or command option and I'm going to duplicate the path to the other side of the hair and then it's a simple alt or option click and close for when I zoom into this so I'm just going to hold the alt or option key and I'm going to click and close the bottom half of this path and then I'm going to do the same thing on the top as I zoom in and I am going to close this half of the path it should have zoomed in right to that. I don't know why it's doing that. But anyway, um, uh, let me get as close as I can to that. And then option click and option close. Now, that path, I'm going to hit Command S to save. That path is going to be used to paint. Um, as I turn off the clicky copy, let me Command or Control click on that path to just turn it off temporarily. But look at how in my hair I have some of that flyaway hair that I'm pointing at right here. And I want to um, bring it up into the bangs and make it a little bit more prominent. So as I click that flyaway hair, I'm going to command click um, and turn it into a selection. Now in doing so, I'm going to hit command H to turn it off. I'm going to make sure in my B key that um, right now I'm painting with, um, because I'm in a path, it doesn't really matter what I'm painting with, but I'm going to put the flow on five and I'm going to make the brush bigger because I am going to be painting with a mouse this time. Um, it doesn't really matter. I'm just going to grab this value right there and I'm going to zoom back out and then I am going to um, click the, co the um, color picker and make it just slightly brighter. And then I'm going to make sure that I'm on my bangs layer. You can see over here in the layer palette on the above hair there's the above hairs. Do you see them? I'm turning them off. I have the bangs selected. So I'm going to um, um, connect this bang. I want to see how close it is if I hit Command H on and off. I want to um, extend that bang um, as I show you in the reference copy. Do you see this hair that comes up that is flowing in this direction right here? I want to make it a little bit more controlled than not control. So I don't know how else to say it, but I'm going to say it like this. So I'm going to bring this down and you can see how I'm painting a little bit stronger value right where I'm pointing. Now, here's the technique I wanted to show you. If I um, click off or on the clicky copy, you can see how it's a little wider because that area encompasses several hairs. So what I do is I simply, and I don't have to show you after this point, but I'm going to hit Command H to show you the selection. Then if I'm in the B key or the M key, I can use the cursor keys to cursor this over very quickly. I can now take and hit Command H. So my whole point is, is I can paint and look at how I can put another hair right next to that hair. Then I can just move it over one, two, three and paint it like this. Then I can move it over one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And then you can see how I can just start to lay in more value. Let me see where I've moved it over to, though. Okay, that's exactly where I wanted it. I want to move it actually over a little farther. So I'm going to put it right about here, hit Command or Control H, and I'm going to lay in that value here. Now, the reason why I'm doing this is because I want to follow it up into this part of the hair structure here. And I made it too heavy or light on purpose um, and I'm going to put it back now to where it was and remember nothing looks good until it's 75 percent completed or 80 percent completed so you just have to stick with your guns let me hit command H here and let me just increase this 
this hair here. Now I'm going to use my layer masking technique to knock that back in value a little bit. Now there are certain hairs that I want to bring off in value up here in that grayed off color. So I'm going to go up here and get that color right here because I like that color that's inside her hair here. Now I'm going to click up to this next layer. Command C on layer 77. I'll turn it on. Command V number 2. Let me hit Command S to save the file. And then I want to um, utilize my path again. But my path I'm going to use and just move it over and over and over and back and forth as I'm painting this value here. Now what I should do is um, use a technique that I haven't shown yet. And I really, um, I'm thinking out loud here. Um, what I want to do is um, show you the ability to paint on a layer one strand. And then instead of making it, um, copying and pasting it to a whole bunch of layers, I want to keep it on the same layer and use a technique of uh, a move tool so I can be in the move tool. And then I am going to hold control, alt, or command option, and I'm going to drag it. And I'm going to make another hair. And I'm going to show you the difference between when that would make a new layer and when that would keep it on the same layer. So I'm going to turn that path into a selection again. I'm going to zoom in, and then in painting with that value, I'm going to hit Command or Control H, and I'm going to show you when I turn this off that I am indeed painting that value right here where I'm pointing right there. Now, here's the technique. If I were to just leave the selection active, and I were to hold Command, Option, or Control, Alt, and Drag, I am going to keep that new hair, let me hit Command or Control H. See how I've made a second one where I'm pointing? But it's on the same layer. Now, I'm going to show you in Command H, which is to hide it, that I'm going to hold Command or Control Alt again. First, let me paint a little bit higher up here and make that go a little bit higher. Um, the reason why it's not letting me paint higher is my original hair. I didn't have enough value up there. But um, I'm going to hit Command or Control H, and I'm going to, which didn't deselect the selection, and I'm going to pull it again over to here. Now you can see how I have that hair right next to this one, but it stayed on the same layer. Now I'm going to do it again, and I'm going to pull it over like this. See how I'm doing that? But I'm going to actually hit Command T, which is going to allow me to turn that selection slightly away and make it a little bit more on an angle that fits that geometry of that hair in that area or the nature of the hair in that area. Now I'm going to hold command option and I'm going to pull again and again and again and I'll even move this one down and now when I turn off the clicky copy you can see how I'm gathering some of those hairs in that area. Now let me put one at a different angle between those hairs. So let me hold command option or control alt. Look at how it's flowing in the same angle but if I hit command T, I can actually turn that hair in a different angle and have it go over like this a little bit more spontaneous than that. And now when I get back on that, that's starting to have that feel that I need in that area. Now I'm going to continue that process, but here's what I was going to show you. Okay, Now I'm going to show you the selection right there. Now if I deselect that selection, and I hold Command Option or Control Alt and I make a new selection. Look at how all the hairs are moving. Now watch Bangs 2 over there on the layer palette turn into a new layer. It actually turns into a Bangs 2 copy layer. So the difference between, and let me Command Z or Control Z back, the difference, and go back one more Command or Control Z. If I have a selection active, and what I'm going to do right now is command click the entire layer so all the hairs are selected. Now if I were to hold command option or control alt and drag right now, they would stay on the same layer.
So I could go like this, watch, I could go like this and make this hair, but now I have these six hairs on the same layer as that. Now temporarily I could hit Command or Control T and I could transform that and it would turn itself and still be separated from the other hairs on that layer. Okay, but as soon as I hit the return key and I deselect like this, now if I hit the V key, do you see how those are on the same layer and I have no control? over that. So let me command Z back, command Z back again, command Z back again, and command Z back again. So what I'm trying to tell you is when you want items to stay on the same layer, have them selected, then drag. If you want items on a different layer, then just drag with the move tool and control alt or command option and they will go to a brand new layer which you have control over because you can move it while it's separated from the other layer or that it is separated from the other layer so that's very important to the nature of how to paint okay so what I want to do is to command or control D okay and I want to drag this to a new layer and put it whoops I want to, um, I had the whole, I didn't have the layer selected when I did that. So I'm in the move tool and I'm going to move this over and you can see how kind of spontaneously I can actually move this over a little bit and keep them not so exactly similar to them to what they were. So I'm going to continue that process because I like that color that's there. Now eventually I would add a layer mask to that one. I would add a layer mask to the one below it and a layer mask to the one below it. So um, let me see back because I think I just hit something. Okay, I want to add a layer mask to bangs too and on bangs I want to add a layer mask. Now I'm going to turn off the upper two layers because I want to work on this layer that I just painted those bright spots on. Now as I go over to here and I turn on the clicky copy, you can see that the bright spots are just a tad bit too bright. Now obviously I could reduce the opacity on them, but I don't want the hair underneath to show through a whole bunch. So I'm going to hit, um, leave them at their full opacity, click on the layer mask, hit the B key, and I'm going to make sure I'm only painting black at about 3 or 4 or 5 percent. And you can see how I can reduce that highlight on that hair, not eliminate it, but reduce it so that it indeed, when I get back on it, has a little bit more nature of what, you know, the color of what um, the hair was. Now, I'm gonna immediately going to go to work on the eyebrows on this movie. So I wanted you to see um, that, um, you know, I'm going to probably not do that now that I'm thinking. I want to go in and you see all these major flyaway hairs that are there. I want to do the same thing in the above hair layer. Look at the above hair layer. And I want to finish off farther than I am all the flyaways that you see. So as soon as I come back on the camera, um, we're going to go right on the start of the next movie to the eyebrows. I'll even name that movie Eyebrows. But I'm going to finish off right now the um, the flyaway hairs and then I'll come right back and I'll show you the, the I'll turn on those layers and you can see it because that's the technique I'm going to use. I'm going to use a path technique right here and you can see how I can join the path together so never draw two two sides of a path. Only draw one and then duplicate it and then option or alt click and close it. Okay, so um, that's what I'm going to do. So in a few seconds I'll be back on this movie and um, I'll show you what I've done. All right, I'm back. The flyaways are done. It's been a few seconds. I'll show you their layers. If I can remember where I put them. Um, underneath hair, above hair, I have several flyaway things. So I'll turn off the whole flyaway on the top. I'll zoom in so you can see them a little bit better. And you can see that I have the flyaways there. And I, they actually consist of several groups and layers. So um, I think what I'm going to do is to color all of these a certain color. So you can see that all of these have to do with the flyaways. And I have two flyaway groups. I have a flyaway group that's over here on her left side of her hair and on the um, other aspect of her hair. Okay, that's the both on the left side. And then all of these layers, as I remove them here and put them back, 
are the flyaway hairs that are um, just in the front of her bangs. And they're gentle. And I used, you know, I didn't try to get exactly what the clicky copy had because, you know, I'm an artist. I have artist license. I can do what the heck I want. But I think they look gentle and I think they look random and I think they look fairly natural. So um, there they are. And she's just about there except for her eyelashes um, and eyebrows. So I wanted to also show you something that's been bugging me on my own illustration for quite a while. This light value by her eye, I have too light. And I'm going to hit the V key, zoom into that, and then I'm going to right hand click. I see that I have a leftover hair right here, which could be in front of her, her face, but I think it's hanging down too far. So before I fix this little white area, I'm going to go right over this hair that's here. I'm going to right hand click and realize that that was on flyaway 2, copy 2. But I don't have to really worry about it. It went right to that layer. And if I turn that off, I found it. So all I really have to do is just grab my um, paintbrush and with black I can just paint right on the layer mask and paint out that hair and there's you know there's many ways we could have done that but um, I wanted to do that right there so I'm gonna hit command S to save but then I'm gonna hit the V key again and I'm gonna zoom into this light area right here and right hand click it's under eye darks too I think so why I say I think is because it, it could be on a texture layer that's higher but let me turn that off and you can see indeed it is on eye um, darks to layer. So what I want to do is have them both on the screen if I can, but I can't. So I'm going to go to the clicky copy, which is way up here. Let me close the flyaway, close the above hair, and I still can't get to it. But I want to turn this on to show you it's just a little bit too bright. Whoops, I have to actually go down and turn it on. Now I can show you if I move back up to the clicky copy, it's just a little bit too bright, okay? So what I'm going to do is very quickly um, make a quick copy of it. Hit the M key, um, marquee this little section here, and hit Command J. Hit the V key for the move tool and move that little guy down. Then I can just adjust to my visual likeness by hitting the V key, right hand clicking over iDarks 2, it goes right to that layer. I could either add a layer mask or just reduce the opacity of the layer. I mean, either way is okay. So let's take the B key and let's just lower the intensity of that a little bit. Just until that just makes more sense. There, I really like what I just did. It was just too prominent. It needs to be there, so I'm going to zoom back out and um, turn off the clicky uh, turn off that little layer that I just had on and I'm just gonna see what that looks like as I toggle and I like that better okay um, she does have a very bright spot right here which I'm not gonna put back in because I think that's distraction on her eye um, I can't think her eyelid and we're now going to go and do the eyebrows on its own movie so um, the hair is just about there except for maybe um, I obviously need to do her ear. See how her ear is not finished inside of there and there's a few hairs by there. So I'm just going to do the shapes that suggest the ear and they're going to be very simply done. And I'll come back with um, the eye lashes and eyebrows right now.